Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly. Ah. And welcome to AP Lecture 2. The second part is the last one. The big idea three. So let's hop right to it. Oops. So, um, spectroscopy. Ooh, spectroscopy determines the structure or concentration. So, this oppy part means we're going to be analyzing something spectro, we're talking about light, electromagnetic wavelength. So we're looking at a bunch of light stuff. This one is probably the most calculator based that we have. So we have the photoelectric effect. Okay. So what this means is light is going to hit the surface of a substance and kick off an electron. So if this is my thing and it's full of atoms and it's hit with light, which is basically energy, right? What happens is that could kick off, boing, an electron, okay? So we can calculate the energy, this is a capital E, it's an energy of light. We can calculate or measure the energy of this light. So the energy of this light, light comes in bundles called photons. It does come in waves too. So you can use them any way you want to in AP chemistry and pretty much any time. Um, so energy is E, it's gonna be in joules equals H, that's Planck's constant. Now, the reason why I say it's like pi is it's just a number. Just know this number, put it in there, it gets you the right answer. It's really the slope of the line. So you've got Y equals MX. It's the slope of the line when you graph frequency. Okay. So frequency, the units are one over seconds or hertz. I do want to point out that one over seconds in AP chemistry is often shown as S to the negative one. I don't think that's too crazy for my math lovers out there. But I do want, if you haven't seen that for a while, that's a good one to know. So we need to be able to use this equation. It's on your equation sheet. Use this equation. Okay. Light has a variety of energies based on its wavelength. Okay. So this would be a short wavelength. Remember, wavelength is the distance between two peaks. And wavelength is... Uh, a lambda, okay? So lambda looks like a funny little tent, okay? And again, it's the distance between two peaks. It could also be the distance between two troughs, but it's one wavelength. Time to go through one cycle, not time, but it's the length to go through one cycle. So on this, we have identified the types of energy, electromagnetic radiation that we have here. Now, all of these, and you should write this down or clip it or whatever it is. All move at the speed of light. And I'd like to point out that sound isn't on here because sound obviously moves at the speed of sound. But all of these move at the speed of light. Okay, so they all move the same speed. So most energetic is gamma rays. Gamma rays, Hulk smash. I guess those are abs. I don't know why I'm making the Hulk so enormous muscular. Well, I know I'm making them enormously muscular, but All right. smash. I should make them green. Strong Hulk. Hulk strong. Gamma rays. Oh, I should tell you this for those of you who are not uh, comic book loving fans that I am. Um, gamma rays are what made the Hulk. Weakest is radio waves. Okay. So if I tell you you're being bombarded with gamma rays, you go, oh no. Instead of turning into the Hulk, I'll probably die of cancer. If I tell you you're being bombarded with radio waves, you're like, cool, dude. I hope it's smooth jazz and it doesn't hurt. Okay. So this is high energy. High energy, right? Short wavelength, right? And um, high frequency. And frequency is the Greek letter again. Okay. Note, as wavelength increases, frequency decreases, and energy decreases, which is basically what my whole whole thing says. You need to know gamma rays, x-rays, you don't want to get a million of those a year. Ultraviolet, that's the stuff in the sun that gives you, gives you uh, skin cancer. This stuff right here is the colors. You probably see more of them than I do, but they're there. So notice it's just a sliver of light that's visible light. Infrared is oh, so close to heat. So if you think of the heat vision goggles and stuff like that, infrared converts the heat pretty easily. Um, then microwaves, isn't this a shock? Microwaves, surprise! They are weaker energy than infrared. They're weaker energy than um, 
uh, visible light. And then radio waves are long and not harmful. Um, typically, find the minimum energy. That's the question AP asks. Okay. You can th think of photons as particles, too, um, which would smack the electrons off with energy. Okay. So here's another uh, equation we know. Frequency equals C over lambda. Frequency, again, is cycles, and it's Greek letter new. C is the speed of light. 2.99 E8. I often write it as 3.00 E8. I think it's 2.998, maybe. Um, lambda's wavelength, which it should be in meters. And this is one where they often give us the wrong unit. To convert nanometers to meters, just to add an E negative 9 to the nanometer number. So if I have 350 nanometers, that would yield 350 E negative 9 meters. 700 nanometers would be 700 E negative 9. Spectroscopy types. Now, this is where it gets kind of icky, okay? Spectroscopy types. X-ray. If I use X-ray, oh, I just missed. If I use this X-ray, um, the frequency, which was on that chart above, this you don't need to know. This is the least important. All you need to know is the order, not numbers. So the energy is, so that means you know, you know this. Quite high, high, medium, low, quite low. Um, so what happens with x-rays? It removes core electrons. What does it tell us about the atom or molecule? It tells us how tightly the electrons are held by the nucleus. It measures their binding energy. And it tells us the identity of the element. And that's PES. We've done PES before. We'll do PES again. Okay. Photon emission spectroscopy with a little... Right? So... Um, that's PES. Ultraviolet, again, high energy. There's excess valence electrons. It, I, it tells us the identity of a molecule or an element. And the name of spectroscopy is UV visible spectroscopy. Now, on this one, ultraviolet, man, is it weird looking. When you do the U do's for this, it's got a. And whenever you see something like this, you go, oh, if you have a peak right here, that means you have a double bonded O. And if you have a broad peak right here, it means you have an OH. And look, the sharp one right here might mean an F. And that's kind of what UV will look like. Okay. And then we'll give you enough information. It's basically, can you little baby chuck it? And you can. Visible light, medium energy. Um, it excites valence electrons. The identity or the concentration, which is what we use most often, concentration of it. So that's visible, visible spectroscopy, and that is the lab that you guys are working on now, A equals ABC. That's Beer's Law. Okay. Infrared. Um, oh, man. I pointed ultraviolet when I meant to point infrared. I guess I'm not paying too attention. This is my infrared. Okay. Um, so infrared has low energy, it changes the vibration of the bonds. Did you guys catch that? This is infrared. I drew an arrow with the wrong one, so I guess we're not reading very closely. Um, the types of bonds, functional groups within a molecule. It's called IR, vibrational spectroscopy. And I know in my class, I showed some of these, it was right before Christmas, that you decided we needed some spectroscopy in there, so we did. Um, microwaves, the energy is quite low. It changed the rotations of the atoms in the bonds. Okay, The location of hydrogen atoms within a molecule and microwave rotational spectroscopy. So someone told me this is true and someone told me this isn't true, that microwaves are like the perfect size to make water molecules dance up and down. So as this goes through, it goes up and it pushes it down. It goes up, pushes it down, pushes it down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And that's why um, microwaves heat up things with water in them. I also heard that wasn't true. But you're talking about rotating it. So you start up with, um, I'll erase my stuff below here. Start off with it up, and then when it's down, when that wave gets to the down part of water, water had to kind of rotate to get to that spot. So that rotation heats up the water. That's the story I heard. That is it. Know this table. Don't mess up like I did with infrared and ultraviolet. And that's probably going to be a question on your pod quiz. But I will say this to you, as always, which is toodles. Let's see if I can find my, where's my, there it is.